Hello, this video is to try to help you to choose a restored or used Steinway Grand Piano in the UK. Most Steinway Grands in the UK date from about 1890 to 1920. This one's 1901. These older restored ones uh, outnumber modern ones by about 10 to 1. That's why you'll find so many restored Steinway Grands and old Steinway Grands in the UK. Here's an older one we're restoring for a client. This one's 18... 86 or 1896 I beg your pardon and uh, we're restoring it in every detail as you can see soundboard strings even rest plank here's a new Steinway hammers that we're putting on and bear in mind that the this age of piano model a is very common in the UK is only 85 keys this is the keys upside down but as you see the top key there is as an a not a c now this restores Steinway is uh, 1901 has 88 keys as you can see this is a model o a good restored time of this period will have a tone as rich as a new one, if not richer. In fact, very, these older timers have a very rich, warm sound. And we put top quality German strings on them so that they, they're as good as a new piano. When you're choosing a restored time, we test the damping, especially around the middle. should cut off really evenly now sometimes they have dampers up to this point here uh, sorry wedge dampers these way we, we prefer wedge dampers right up to here uh, because you get better damping with wedge dampers that's a, a major factor on restoration is the touch weight we spend a lot of time getting this exactly right weighing off the keys now, on this age of Steinway it should depress about 47 47 and a half grams with the right hand pedal depressed so you have to depress the pedal when you're doing it now obviously you haven't got these touch weights that we use so if I put the touch weight on top of the sharp might need to encourage it by hitting the bottom of the keyboard but they should all be weighed off at about 47 47 and a half grams a similar weight to that is five one pound coins you can see that's going down the same and put on top of the sharp going down the same they should all be weighed off the same as each other so we spend a lot of time getting those even just as important as what we call up weight so that's the the weight at which the if the key will go up if it's encouraged again from underneath i'm just bashing this and it goes up interesting comparison this is top range quite digital piano and that needs a bit more weight that's like a modern piano modern modern grands they they have a slightly heavier touch uh, it doesn't matter that much in terms of when you're learning the piano it's not that much different but the 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 geometry of the older action means that you should have it slightly lighter but notice on the digital piano the up weight is very different if i got the same up weight here just over 20 grams 21 and a half uh, you can see it just pulls it straight up when an extra 9.5 grams still goes up pretty pretty quickly we need about 35 grams before this one comes up so the the up weight really is far too great and on this cheaper range digital piano uh, we have down weight here again roughly the same as the modern grand piano but the up weight is almost the same uh, as the down weight so that really has no no difference between up and down weight that's just why it sort of feels so different from a real piano a really important factor is to get the right hammers for the right piano and this is why you often find a lot of these older Steinways are restored and the action is far too heavy because the hammers are the wrong ones. These are the correct hammers and if you ask Arbel or Renner for the correct hammers for a 1901 Steinway and they'll give you this weight uh, and they're just right. These are actually made by Arbel. It doesn't really matter if you get Arbel or Renner hammers. Renner make most Steinway hammers in, in the Europe. Uh, occasionally Steinway have used Arbel. Changing the, the shank is a really good idea because then you get really even center pins here otherwise you've got to even them up one by one yourself if you don't change the shank and, and the, the hinge as well apart from, apart from touch rate the, the other finishing off is finishing off work that you often find isn't done on restored slime is often the parts used are really good but the finishing off is the problem and so it's the, 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 the person at the end of the chain that needs to finish things off properly for you and can customize to a certain extent now hammers uh, if they were just raw put on then they're not going to sound anything like correctly first of all they're pre-toned and this is this pre-toning down here is done in a vice before the hammers are put on the piano and maybe pricked quite deeply about 20 times Renner on the course we went on recommend doing about 20 or 30 even pre-toning around this area here and that gives bounce to the hammer and then it bounces off and the harmonics come out properly um, now you can see I've marked the strings here by marking the underside of the string so I marked the hammers uh, to bring marks now that you can see the three marks clearly there now it's really important that the hammer hits 
and this is another thing that's not always finished off properly, the hammer must hit all three strings at the same velocity, it's at exactly the same time. You can see there, now this does show up for me, uh, whether possibly that one is not hitting that string on the right as, uh, as early as it's hitting those two. So I'm going to investigate that, but it may just be that the, the, the line, the, the, the underside of the string that we painted, by the way, paint it very gently, um, they don't damage the string at all but the this is done for an accorder toning as well so i can tone in the middle between so that where it hits in the unaccorded pedal it hits between there and then we can tone that properly but there we're going to have to have a look now if these are not lined up so they hit all three together uh, then you're going to get a very bad harmonics thin tone as well all sorts of problems it's really crucial that they hit all three strings at the same time um, so toning down here first uh, and then once you pre-toned is what we call that and then we do fine toning up here at this point this is one toning needle a thick needle for toning down here these thinner needles for up here now here's the thinner needles three needles in that to uh, toning needles here thinner needles tone around this area here and then finishing off extremely carefully and this is why you need the string marks because new hammers don't have marks of the string um, can't seem to, that's better it's better focus um, in between here where it, where it will the unaccorded pedal hit there and then the fine, fine, uh, final toning is done in between here. Now you will stray slightly onto that point there but um, if uh, you can always just adjust that afterwards but it's really really nice to get a different unaccorder. Of course it, over the years the, the difference will be made anyway because as, as the hammer hits the string it gets harder at that point and then softer at the point that it's not hitting but uh, concert pianists and I've done this for concert pianists do need uh, to have the piano tone very often in between so that when they use the unaccorder you can hear a difference of tone.